So basically, I'm an artist. And to prove it um, to the US government, I took the AP studio art exam. I may not remember exactly when I took the test, but I remember what it was like and what you need to know in order to get a perfect score. Except, here's another disclaimer. When I took the test, it was out of five. Like, the maximum score you could get was five. And I did get a five. That's why I feel qualified enough to make this video. But, I looked it up, and I think that now it's out of six. So, I don't know what to tell you. So, basically, I made a handy dandy PowerPoint. Because turns out when I was um, impulsively deleting old files on my Google Drive a couple months ago, I deleted the old presentation that I had made with my actual accurate portfolio uh, pieces and order. So this one now is just kind of a jumbled up mess. All of these pieces are in order, at least for the concentration, of worst to best because I was advised by my art teacher to show growth. Like, that's the whole point of the portfolio is to show that you've learned how to draw at some point during this whole process. So um, I would recommend that you should order your pieces from worst to best, at least for concentration. For breath, it's a, it's a little less essential. Um, I should probably start with an overview of what this test is. So 12 pieces concentration following one theme, 12 pieces breath section, and then five of your total 24 pieces, probably from your concentration, are going to be sent in to the college board. I don't know if that's still true during quarantine times because I don't really know anything. I'm arrived. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus! Coronavirus! So let's get into it. Uh, my concentration is about switching men and women in society. And at the time, I was like, oh, wow, this is so poignant. This is so crazy and radical. You're so edgy for talking about it. When you see the actual pieces, it's a little bit less like, ooh, fight the man, and a little more like, haha, <laughs> boobies. <laughs> no, that's just who I am, I guess, but I, you know, I got the score, so I guess the college board thought it was pretty good. So don't feel the need, I guess that's my first piece of advice, don't feel the need to um, make your concentration super serious and super edgy, because I know a lot of high schoolers, especially high school artists, are going to be like, oh, I want to talk about my inner demons and how much I hate my parents or something like that but you don't have to make it edgy like or you could make the topic theoretically edgy but you know I think the AP readers um kind of appreciate humor because they rarely get it so like I said worst pieces first of course um this one was made like pretty instantly as kind of a last ditch thing so don't feel bad if a few of your peaches pe peaches my pussy be burning, itching, burning. Don't feel bad if a few of your pieces are a bit on the rushed end because that's how it always works for everyone. Everyone in my AP Studio Art class was still missing like six pieces <laughs> a week before the exam. So yes, some of them aren't going to be rushed. And just put them at the beginning of your portfolio if they still look good. Don't put in bad pieces, but if they're good enough, um, put them at the beginning. It's like I said, it sh should be from worst to best, even though for most people, they actually make their best pieces first. But, you know, who cares? <laughs> oh, I didn't actually talk about what this is. This is supposed to represent um, how in society a lot of men are able to be ugly while still wanting, like, trophy wives. So, like I said, edgy. Um, it seems kind of rude to just make a woman fat and call her ugly but like I said I was I was like 17 what, what do I know when you're what do you know when you're 17 what do you know okay um this one's actually very similar um this one's about like a cougar basically because how most men like celebrity actor men who are like in their 40s 50s whatever are still dating women who are like 18 an old woman with a young man on the red carpet and that's it like I said, they're going to get better. These were <laughs> the poopy ones first, but they still have to fit the theme and they still have to be okay. Um, now this one's a little edgy in the majority of 
uh, domestic abuse cases you hear being men abusing. So it's like, oh, well, a woman can abuse too. Uh, or something. Uh, these are all very edgy. Actually, they're not. This one's kind of edgy. I don't actually remember if this was officially in there, but this is um, a woman as the Greek mythological figure, Atlas. Like a woman. Women carry the world. Mm. This one's oil painting. I haven't been mentioning the mediums. Oh, I should probably do that. Wait, real quick. All color pencil. This is color pencil Copic marker. Color pencil oil paint. Look at that. This one's pastel. This is um, creation of Adam. Well, what if it was Eve who broke up a piece of her rib cage and made Adam, huh? Oh, also, what if God is a woman? This one is when we start getting into the better pieces, I feel. Um, this one's acrylic paint and colored pencil. And, you know, a woman is a knight, a man is the prince. Just go watch Outlander. It's the same plot, really. It's just women bodybuilders, because, you know, you always think of a man as being the big muscly jock guy, but this is like, haha, women can have muscle. This is, um, so remembering that this portfolio was made in 2017 or 2018 or whatever, this is like, oh, what if Hillary won? Wouldn't that be crazy? But this one, I was like, getting all artsy with it because I had just heard about composition in one of my pre-collegiate art classes and they were like oh my favorite composition is of Mondrian's I think it's called color number five or something color setting number five compared to Whistler's portrait of his mother oh so I was like oh my god composition is so crazy you know you know how young artists are when they discover art <laughs> this one's Color pencil and Copic marker as well. Most of these. I was really into Copic markers. And color pencil was just functional, so it's most of them. This one is women as construction workers. Um, we're getting into territory where most of these are actually based on stock photos, which I would avoid because then you could be charged with plagiarism, but I wasn't because the content of the image had been changed or whatever. But actually, there was a girl in my class, my year, who got sent to the principal's office and wasn't able to turn in her portfolio because she was caught plagiarizing so watch out that's just a disclaimer not to say that these are plagiarized but they are based heavily on reference if you can avoid it don't make your composition like 50 percent or more based on a stock photo or somebody else's art because then you're gonna get in trouble um this is another stock photo one all my good ones are stock photo ones so, like from here on out they're all stock photo based but um, the idea of the man as the homemaker. This is another one of me being like, oh, I know about art because of, this is also based on that co Mondrian's color number five of the distribution between primary colors and the eye and how we like, how this is a perfectly uh, balanced piece because it's majority blue, um, middle red, and just a little bit of yellow. But then I found out later that I was actually incorrect and had remembered that incorrectly and that red is actually supposed to be the biggest one and blue is supposed to be the middle one but anyway oh this is because I do not have a photo of a piece that is directly behind me Oop. see it's right there <laughs> but that's as good as you're gonna get it's a piece about uh, women in the military. Basically, I just drew two soldiers. It's probably one of my better rendered pieces. It's just colored pencil, but that goes here. Um, this is basically a hundred percent the stock photo's composition, and everything in it is from a stock photo, which once again I would not advise. But clearly, the content was changed. This is the one we're talking about. I'm like. Haha, <laughs> boobies. Why are women not allowed to show their nipples, but men are? Like, men's nipples are gross. Once again, 17 year old me being like, Ugh. you know? This one's funny because it's up on my wall right now, and my little brother looks at it all the time, and he's like, Sister, why aren't they wearing bras? And I say, Why do they have to? Jerk. And basically, I'm edgy. I guess in retrospect, like I said, less stock photo, but. Um, then again, I was 17 in high school. What what am I going to reference? What am I going to do? Think for myself? Yeah, right. That's too hard. I'm just here to talk about boobs. That's it. Thank you. Wake me up! Wake me 
I just happened to be next to my art teacher during the summer and told her, oh, hey, the scores came out. I got a five. And she's like, oh, really? I didn't think you would. And I was like, oh. But anyway, the most successful concentrations were the ones that were human focused in some way, which is that's very broad. I'm not saying you have to make yours figurative like mine. Like mine was clearly about humans depicting humans, stuff like that. But you should make it about something commenting on the human condition, the human state of mind, something like that, because all the fives in my class were based on something. One of them was about um, human hobbies. One of them was about human association, or not, I guess the words human weren't in this, but it's about their personal association as a human with their hometown and as a change and stuff like that. Like all of the ones that were truly successful were about humans in some way. And that makes sense why they score more because do you know who's grading these? Human. If you can make it personal, that's good because you're a human, I think. I hope. I mean, I'm not, I hope. I'm not xenophobic, but like, I assume. Um, but the least successful ones were the ones that were like clearly arbitrary or clearly like just like to draw that. Like the girl in my class who made hers about butterflies. Like, I guess if you can pull it off in some sort of abstract conceptual way that's okay but it's a lot harder to be conceptual about butterflies than it is about the human condition so actually just making your life easier by talking about something emotionally or politically charged will be helpful this is just a still life most of these are actually just still life so this one was like a study of the skeletal frame of a still life like dissecting that you know how to structure the still life. You can see it fades from fully rendered in the front with the pumpkin to sketchy skeletal wireframes. There's a different term for this in art, but I've been doing game design too long, so now it's like all I see is wireframe, but there's something else that we used to call this in art that I'm not remembering. So anyway, you know what I mean. It's a sketch. Uh, this is pastel on toned paper. This one, um, clearly color forward rather than shape or I guess tonality, but I'm looking at this lime right now and I haven't really looked at this piece in a long time, but this lime's really doing it for me, not gonna lie. This one's a charcoal study. This is a lot of studies. I'm sure I did not put this in this order. Because you're not supposed to do study, 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 portrait, portrait, portrait. You know, you gotta disperse them in the breath. Unlike in the concentration where it's like, clearly worst to best. Because all that separates them is, you know, technical ability. Because they're all supposed to be the same ideology. But with breath, they're not the same ideology. So you have to make sure that you disperse them in a visually pleasing way. Wow. <laughs> Another still life in pastel. I know that these four were, well, I know that at least three of these four were definitely in the portfolio. This one was. Um, this one is my least favorite. Looks quite muddy, but also the line, the lines are not straight in this. This is not a good one, but this is one of the last minute ones. So this is probably more towards the beginning. Um, this is a portrait in pencil. Uh, one of my classmates and uh yeah that's that's what it is this was this one's a little bit more interesting i think for the portfolio than the other still lifes because this involves cropping and some other stuff this is acrylic paint by the way <laughs> uh color cropping composition all that junk so this kind of piece that features more than one concept is going to be pretty valuable because just one piece like this I think tells a lot more to a AP reader than all four of the previous still lifes. I'm pretty sure my head's blocking part of this but okay well anyway this ha this is not how this was presented in the portfolio. I had three of these I think. You can't even see this. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you can't even see the woman underneath my head. I can't move it. Can I? Oop. 
she run it. It was three of these. I can't find the third one. But three of them cropped together into one image. Yes, you can do that. You can edit images if you have the means in like Photoshop or whatever. Not like the content of the image because then that's digital art. But you can crop together photos of multiple drawings and then make it your own composition. I don't think you actually can, like technically speaking. But if you can make it look like you didn't actually do that, then what are they going to do? <laughs> and I would recommend that if you have the ability to do figure drawings from real life, you should definitely include them. If you have them, include like at least one page of gestural, you know, warm up, like 30 second to one minute drawings that fill up a whole composition, and then like one or two pages of poses from observation. Okay, this is another portrait. This is, um, I'm not sure this was in the portfolio, but this is colored pencil. I think this is technically illegal for me to have submitted or to be showing online right now because this is part of like a project that my art program in high school would do about like drawing orphans or whatever. FBI, open up! <laughs> Yeah, a colored portrait rather than a black and white shows a little more depth, I guess, because um, the previous one in graphite shows a little bit more shadow. This one shows I don't know, nothing. This is a still life of my bathroom as opposed to fruit. Thank God. But yeah, colored pencil shows a mirror. Um, but once again, not straight lines on the perspective, which is not great. I'm not enjoying that, but I do like the details on the counter because I remember what this bathroom looks like. And this is it. I'm not going to get too political, but basically these are some of the figureheads of the Republican Party and they're um, most, I'm going to say, outrageous presidents in American history and just putting some feminine things on them like makeup or hair dye or a flower crown on Nixon because why not? Or right, here, I'll expose Trump a little more. I don't know. This seems like it wasn't my concentration, but I already have 12 pieces, so clearly it couldn't have been. But it was made during that time, and it's a series of pastel on matte board. So, eh. It is what it is. And I believe that is it. Some things to keep in mind about your actual presentation is that, like I said, there's five quality pieces. So you need to worry about this for at least five pieces um at my school we mat matted our pieces matted i don't i've never heard this word in any other context but basically that just means putting your art in between two pieces of mat board to uh, give them not only protection but good presentation value because then when the reader pulls the art out of the portfolio and sees oh you glued them to some cardboard that's some real effort um but if you don't have matte board, I guess that's not the end of the world. Just knowing that putting your art on something else for presentation's sake will get you um, some mental points in the AP reader. I'm sure that they're not allowed to actually give points based on that, but it doesn't hurt at all to matte your pieces. But if you're seeing this portfolio and you're thinking, oh, I can't do that. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Something that you should also be striving to achieve with your concentration, for sure, is how does your art as a whole convey a message and how does each piece contribute to that message? So mine showed a variety of medium, of ways of looking at the message, like some were more edgy, um, but some were also like funny and humorous. And I think including a variety of tone can also be as beneficial as a variety of medium and approach. So variety, 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 and especially for breath, obviously variety is huge because you're trying to show them that you can do more than just your concentration. So make sure that if you can, include as much as you can. As long as it's good. <laughs> or not even good, you don't have to look at your art and say, is it good? That's kind of like toxic actually, to look at your art and be like, this is not good. That's not the point, that's holding you back. Is this your best? Is this the best you can do right now? Or maybe not, whatever. If it's your best, it's your best, and you can't regret that, because it's what you can do. And then finally, if you're wondering about like, 
wow, Isabella, that's all great and stuff, and uh, thank you for showing me your art, or no thank you, you suck, but either way, I'm here to talk about the statement, not the art, I want to hear about the statement, what do I write in my artist statement? I don't even remember at all what I wrote, not even a little. The only piece of advice I remember from the artistic statement is to reference two to three pieces at least from your portfolio by number, like in the submission each piece has a number, reference them when explaining your concentration. By referencing pieces then um, the readers know that you're not just, I don't know, pulling that out your ass or whatever. So just try and make it look like you know what you're, what you've done. <laughs> what have you done? You should have known a long time ago what your concentration was about and why you're making it and why it matters to you. So if you know those three things, just write them out in your statement. It doesn't have to be an essay. It's just what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Make sure that your pieces are well lit when you're taking the photos. If they're on mat board, don't include the mat board. Have photos cropped immediately to the edge of the composition. Maybe not always to the edge of, like, the page, or maybe include the page even though the piece is, like, only in the center, but you want the whole page. It's up to you. That, I mean, how you want it to be seen is how it should be sent. So if you crop all the way, you better make sure that your piece is meant to be seen cropped all the way. Um, and make sure that it's well lit. You use a good camera. I know that's like hard for some people because some people don't have access to a good camera or only have their phone camera. But I mean, the least you can do, I suppose, is take the photo under good lighting so, or like during the daytime when the sun is out um, and make sure there's no like shadows or you can see your hand like taking the photo uh, because then the college board will think you don't care, which seems a little classist because some people don't really have a choice. But that's the college part. I don't know what to say. Good luck and make sure you <laughs> wash your hands. Come on!